Now tracking the latest conditions, Natasha. A very impressive system indeed. We want to take you to Titan HD and show you exactly what we're seeing on the satellite radar imagery. We've seen this area of low pressure start to develop, but with this system here, we're not looking at a lot of precipitation. It's going to be fairly limited. Sure. And it's because of a departing low that's out ahead of us, out to the east. That's why we have the strong pressure gradients, which means big pressure differences, which means strong winds for us. We're going to watch those winds eventually die down, though, as we get to tomorrow afternoon. My my goodness, we're looking at snowfall rates anywhere from a quarter of an inch to a half inch an hour. And just taking a look at this guardrail here, we're estimating about an inch accumulation. Um, but for the weekend, I know a lot of folks trying to figure out, you know, can I get up the mountain? <laughs> can I get back down when it's time? We'll have the answer for you coming up in just a second. You're looking at a live picture right now. Out from Stockton, we had a nice, consistent rain this morning, but we're starting to let off here. A light drizzle in the West Sacramento area at the moment. Now you're looking at Stockton. Hey, we've got some blue sky out there. Isn't that nice to see? Finally, for a change. I know we've all been waiting for it. Uh, but we're going to have kind of some ups and downs here in our weather forecast for the next five to seven days. Right now, your temperature in Stockton is 57 degrees. Same story for you in Sacramento, Marysville 55. We have 57 Oroville, 50 in Auburn. And now those temperatures in the mountain areas starting to rise. So South Lake Tahoe now up to 37 degrees. So instead of seeing snow hit the ground there, they're starting to see a mix of rain and snow. Winds pretty light overall as you get out of the northern San Joaquin Valley and then up to Sacramento, west at about eight miles per hour and west at seven in Marysville, west at 12 in San Francisco. Looking at Titan HD, this is your current picture. We have a few snow flurries left just south of Highway 50 and plenty of rain falling right now in Sonora. We'll start to see that change and kind of move off to the east. Here's the big picture for you. We've been focusing a lot on the rest of California while they've been getting hammered. We're talking about seasonal rainfall totals within a day for places like San Diego. And as we take a closer look at Southern California, we can see they're still getting hammered more rain for the Southern California region through tomorrow. But overall, Christmas Day looks as to be uh, a little bit of clearing for everybody. We'll get to that in just a second. This is what we're watching for. The next ridge of high pressure starts to build in behind that trough that, that we're dealing with right now. So with that comes, guess what? Sinking air creates a cap over the valley. So we're talking about morning fog as we get through tomorrow morning and again Friday morning. But then as we move into the weekend, we're watching another trough of low pressure start to push in behind this ridging. So as we get to late Saturday night and into Sunday. Here's that next trough just waiting for us. So it looks as though Sunday, if that's your travel day, you could run into some snow as those snow levels will be dropping as we get into the weekend. Highs for today in Sacramento, we're expecting to only stay pretty much at 55 degrees. Auburn 51, Grass Valley 46, Yuba City 55, and southeast winds at about 10 miles per hour. So as we check out that all important seven day forecast, what's in store for us? Well, depending on which direction you plan on going, if you are leaving town uh, again today, we're pretty much watching those showers wrap up. It'll be the mountain areas that look to be a little bit on the snowy side here, at least through this afternoon. And then tonight we start to see everyone get a break and then we get into Friday, Saturday. Those will be our transition days into another wet pattern. And then Sunday, it could be a mess for us out on the roadways. Again, snow levels dropping down to about 3,500 feet by then. A dramatic difference from where we are today at about 6,500 to 7,500 feet. Good morning, we uh, have temperatures that are fairly comfortable. Well, compared to yesterday, anyway. Starting off about 36 degrees. You're looking at a live picture. Fabulous Sacramento morning. Later on today, plenty of sunshine. Once again, daytime highs are going to feel very good. And just in case you're wondering, you know, we haven't had rain or any snow to really speak of in a while. How are those ski resorts doing? Well, I checked out the bases in most areas, places like Sierra Tahoe, and uh, they have at least a 10 foot base still. So that's good news for you. If you're thinking about getting out and about for the weekend, checking out today's highs, we'll get up to about 65 degrees by the time we hit your three, four o'clock hour sunset time, 539. And here's your future cash showing what's going to happen here. Still under a ridge of high pressure, but we see behind it by the time we get to Sunday afternoon, area of low pressure, nice and set up all the way for places like Washington State down through Oregon. And then us will get our share of showers as we get to 
Monday afternoon and then lingering through Wednesday and again Thursday and probably even Friday. Daytime highs will also drop off. We'll see those numbers go from the mid to upper 60s to the upper 50s by the time we hit Tuesday. All right, that's it for your forecast. Hope you like it. Good morning to you. Let's take a look at your current temperatures as you step out the door. Temperature in Sacramento 55. We have 59 San Francisco under cloudy skies, 51 Santa Rosa over there. Visibility down to about a mile and a half, 56 in Modesto. And this morning in Auburn, just 61 degrees. So looking at your satellite image over the last 12 hours, we've still been under this ridge of high pressure. But Look at this nice, big, fat low right here sitting offshore, waiting to make its entrance into the northern portions of California. Chance of rain for us as we move into Friday evening, but more likely as we move into Saturday afternoon, Saturday night into Sunday morning. So here's your future cast heading into Friday evening. Again, watching the area of low pressure kind of help break down that area of high pressure we've been uh, pleasantly enjoying all week long. So temperatures will drop down. Again, chance for rain best for us as we get into Friday night. And we're looking at a second wave coming through Saturday evening, giving us perhaps measurable amounts of rain. And then, of course, we'll be getting back to sunny skies. Temperatures overall tomorrow, 85. Thursday 85, Friday dropping that down to 80, 79 Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, back to the mid to low 80s, mostly clear skies, overnight lows in the low 50s. We'll send it back to you. It sure is. It's been a pretty light snowfall rate so far, Sydney and Franca. But you know, rates overall between a quarter of an inch and a half inch an hour. Look at this, the guardrail right here in Colvex. We're looking at an accumulation so far from about three hours ago this morning, an inch of snow right here. And then, of course, we look at our handy dandy thermometer. We are at 30 degrees here in Colfax just 2,500 feet. So, of course, we are seeing the snowfall even at lower elevations, as low as about 1,900 feet so far this morning. And if you are going to be heading up the hill, you must do it. Be aware you have to carry chains. And looking at video from earlier this morning, right at the is where most of the big rigs are pulling over. They're being screened by Caltrans. And then you go a little bit further up the hill into Colfax, and that's where most of the trucks are pulling over to actually put on their chains. So if you don't have four-wheel drive, chains are definitely required between this area all the way up to the Nevada state line. So do come prepared if you must come up the hill. But I can tell you, it's a beautiful sight right here in Colfax. <laughs> we'll send it back to you. Compared to the wild Bering Sea, commercial fishermen here have it pretty easy. We linked up a local crab fisherman with those from the deadliest catch. Watch as they compare notes. Alaska's ruthless Bering Sea. San Diego. Waves towering over 50 feet. Watch out. Hang on, hang on. La Jolla swells two to three feet. The ocean's heaven and hell, like this close together. One second is heaven and the next second is hell. Longtime local fisherman Lauro Saraspi has a healthy respect for the ocean and knows Southern California cannot compare to the stormy seas of Alaska. You don't even go out the Mission Bay jetty when it's rough, when the surf is three or four feet, five feet high. And up there they, they fish in 20, 30 foot swells, waves. And it's, it's amazing. I mean, there's, there's just no comparison. Lauro and his son Andy are not just fishermen, but avid Deadliest nice Catch viewers. But when you talk to the captains of this reality show, they say the cameras only catch a portion of what really goes on out there. When you start watching in, uh, in April, you're six months behind what we did. Even with all the camera crew, dog and pony show, these captains remain true to their roots, as humble as can be. Everybody makes such a fuss about us wherever we go, and it's certainly gratifying to get the recognition, but also, you know, I'm just a fisherman, and that's all. So we're just crabbers. We're not actors. Or, we're just guys. While this is a TV show to us, it's still a job to them, a job they rely on to bring in cash. So what's the future of crabbing in Alaska? I'm a little worried we might be over harvesting the king crab, but we'll find out when we get the next survey. This harbor seal pup can smell freedom in the air. He spent the last three weeks under SeaWorld's care, and now he's well enough to go back to the wild. Harbor seals tend to be a little more solitary. He's actually a pup from this season, so he probably pupped out in January, February. So he is a young guy. He knows when we're coming with the fish, he gets right in the pool and starts eating the fish really well, which is great for us because that lets us know he's ready to be released. Nearly three weeks ago, the seal was rescued at Children's Pool in La Jolla. 
He was living with a strand of fishing line around his neck and hook in his mouth. SeaWorld says his wounds were not as bad as they could have been. They treated the pup with antibiotics to prevent infection, and now he's in good shape. He wasn't here very long either, so, How much? so we're good. A couple pounds, so that's good for an animal this size. That's always encouraging. So encouraging that even the dolphins were standing by to say a final farewell to the pup. Now with the seal in the transport container, we're homeward bound. This is the most rewarding part of the job right here, what we're doing today. On the way out to the Point Loma kelp beds, we wave to some friendly faces. All the while, we're anticipating the big release. Sometimes I catch myself looking at the seal, wondering if he knows he's going home. In just a moment, this harbor seal pup is going to be released into the Point Loma kelp beds. After being in SeaWorld's care for nearly three weeks, it's healthy now and it's ready to get back to life as usual. Cautiously, he wiggles his body over the edge and he's in. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. He gave us a good chase, swimming fast as if he knows this place like the back of his flippers. Every so often, those beady eyes would surface. I bet he thinks this is a game disappearing like a marine mammal Houdini. Eventually, we had to say our goodbyes, comforted by the thought that he's home where he belongs. Natasha Stenbach, News 8.